Our scout troop was on a camping trip in the winter. It was frigid. It was snowing. And by 9 p.m. on the first night, many parents had come to the campground to rescue their sons from this winter wonderland. But those of us who remained said that we were, we were the tough ones. We didn't need to be rescued by our parents from a little cold and a little snow. At 11.30 p.m. that Friday evening, I was freezing in my sleeping bag in the tent, miserable. And at 11.30 p.m., my dad unexpectedly appeared at the flap of my tent. He didn't say a word. He just put a heavy army blanket on top of my sleeping bag, and he put a thermos of hot chocolate beside me. I was silently grateful that he had come, but I feared that the other scouts would make fun of me since my dad had come to help me in the cold. So pretending to be asleep, I didn't say a word, and dad didn't say a word either. Two days later on Sunday at around lunchtime when dad picked me up, I was in a horrible mood. Three days in the cold will do that. And when my dad picked me up, I did not say the two words that I should have said. Thank you. Looking back, this experience teaches me a great deal about how parents love their children. Parents do countless acts of kindness and love and self-giving, and many times their children, well, they just take it all for granted. And other times, their children should say, thank you, but they pretend to be asleep in the sleeping bag. Children can even respond to their parents' kindness with anger or a bad mood. And many parents don't say a word. Today, we celebrate the Feast of St. Joseph. And as we read our gospel passage, I wonder if Joseph felt what my father must have felt on that cold weekend at the campground. In Luke's gospel, Mary and Joseph have taken 12-year-old Jesus to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And after the feast, they start the long walk home. Eventually, Mary and Joseph realize that Jesus is not in the group headed back to Nazareth. Panicked, Mary and Joseph rush back to Jerusalem and search for Jesus. They find him in the temple, where he's listening to the religious teachers and asking insightful questions. Mary says to Jesus, Son, why have you done this? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. Now, you might expect Jesus to say to his parents, Thank you. Thanks for coming to find me. But instead, Jesus says, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? I wonder what St. Joseph must have thought when Jesus said those words. Twelve years prior, Joseph had said yes when God asked him to serve as the foster father of Jesus. And Joseph carefully uh, cared for Mary and Joseph for all of those years. And now Joseph hears Jesus say, didn't you know that I have to be in my father's house, my father's house. Ouch! Was Jesus saying to Joseph, you're not my father, someone else is, and I'm in my father's house. But notice, even after Jesus says this, Joseph does not say a word. In fact, in the entire New Testament, St. Joseph never says a thing. 
And because he never speaks a recorded word in any of the Gospels, the only way we can know anything about Joseph is to pay attention to his actions. What do his actions tell us? They tell us that he was a man who put his love into action. He was a man who kept on loving and kept on giving even when he had questions. He was a man who loved his wife and loved this miraculous child and kept on loving even when the 12-year-old child appeared to be, I don't know, ungrateful. Joseph does not go around talking about love. He doesn't go around talking about generosity. He simply does it. And Joseph does the loving, generous thing even when no one says thank you. This Lent, let's be more like St. Joseph. Let's do less talking about love, less talking about generosity or service, and let's do more action. If we, like St. Joseph, never spoke a recorded word, would people still be able to look at our actions and see how much we love God and our neighbor?